as we realize we're a soul and then we connect to the Supreme Soul, then all these other facets of our consciousness are awakened. People talk about the third eye or people talk about the chakras or as you mentioned about the pineal gland, all of these things. The basic point is we are spiritual beings and we have a spiritual relationship with the divine. When you put a plug into the socket, then that plug and that appliance can access energy which is thousands of miles away in the powerhouse. So similarly, when as a soul you connect to the Divine Supreme, then all the aspects of your consciousness are fully awakened. Are fully awakened. Okay, so then, now that you have um, made us to understand what is called soul, now we can talk about what is the origin of the soul, because now we know what a soul is. Yes, yes. What is the origin of a soul? Before I come to that question, I'll say one other thing. Okay. The soul has three qualities. Maybe in your younger years, you read fairy tales. Mm. And how does every good fairy tale end? Sometimes bad. Yeah. But what's the usually the last line? And they lived happily after. ever after. after. Right. So they lived happily ever after. So this line points to the three qualities of the soul. Ever after means the soul is eternal. Lived means the soul is always conscious. And happily means the soul is always situated in happiness. In Sanskrit, these three qualities are called Sat, eternal, Chit, conscious, and ananda, happy. So the soul is eternal, is always conscious, and it lives in a state of bliss. So what's the origin of the soul? There you have your answer. The soul is eternal, is always existing, but the soul comes from God. Now that sounds a little on one hand, we're saying the soul comes from God, but then on another hand, we're saying the soul is eternal. Mm -hmm. But this is the way to understand it. The sun rays come from the sun. Agreed? Can you ever have a sun without sun rays? No. No. So in one sense, the sun rays come from the sun, but in another sense, the sun and the sun rays are inseparable. In the same way, we are eternal, God is eternal. But we come from God. And therefore, the origin of the soul is God. But another thing to understand is that the soul is always is eternal, is always existing, and it will always continue to exist. It will always continue to exist. So it comes from the Creator or God. And it is always in existence. So how do souls get into this mechanism? Wow, this body? That's a very good question. So it's explained there are two worlds. We are currently living in the material world. But there is a spiritual world. And this world is a reflection of the spiritual world. Everything that we see going on here happens in the pure form in the spirit world. How did we end up here? Hmm. We have a relationship with God. We were all in the spiritual world with God. But you see, in order for there to be love between God and the souls, there has to be free will. Can you force someone to love you? No. You have to give them the choice. So it's said that there are a certain number of souls in the spiritual world who begin to become curious about what life would be like to be separate from God. 
And when they develop that curiosity out of their free will to want to know what life would be like separate from God, then they come to this material world that we're living in. So all of us are here in this material world because we were curious to experience what would it be like mm. to be separate from God. Mm -hmm. And here we are. You are watching the biggest and the largest I, um, the platform of all knowledge. We are the mother of all spiritual platform. You don't have to forget that. We appreciate the fact that they acknowledge this platform from afar all over the world. And when they come into Africa or come to Ghana, they want to appreciate the platform by visiting us and we appreciate them. Uh -huh. So now, the soul comes from the Lord or God. So when we come here to ex experience, whilst the soul is here on earth, in this mechanism, why is it here on this earth? And while the soul is here, what does it have to do with the job here? And how does God connect with us while we are here? Do, do you get yes, it? Yes, I understand your question. Mm -hmm. This world is like a university. We come here to this world to learn lessons, to learn lessons about ourselves, to learn lessons about life, to learn lessons about happiness, and ultimately to learn lessons about our relationship with God. So therefore in this world we go through so many different experiences and all of those experiences are meant to evolve our consciousness to the point where we understand I'm not meant to be in this world I'm meant to be in the spiritual world with God and when one realizes they're a soul that they have a relationship with God then what happens is at the end of their life if they remember God then they gain release from this world and they go back to God but if they don't remember God, and if they still have material desires and aspirations, then they come back into this world. So this world is basically a place where we are experiencing different and things. And who is regulating that? Who would judge the soul that you did so, you don't remember God, go back? Who is in charge of that? God is overseeing everything. He creates the whole system. But then what God does is He creates different individuals who oversee aspects of the universe and manage things. And therefore there are different individuals who regulate what happens to the soul on its journey to the next life. Uh, but it's all going on under the plan of God. Uh, so we want to know those who are regulating. Can we manipulate them? <laughs> who are those? We want to know those who are regulating and see if we can ma uh, manipulate them. So many people try to do that. They are known as demigods. Mm -hmm. Demigods almost means like a half god. And therefore they are powerful. They're in charge of different aspects of the universe. Some, p some people pray to demigods for wealth. Some people pray to demigods for good fortune. Some people pray to the demigods for uh, a good partner. Is there any consequences about that from, uh, for, from doing that or it's okay to do that? Before There's no we consequences, okay. but the ultimate consequence is that what you ask those powerful entities for, even if you receive it, it won't make you happy. Also, oh, there is consequences. If it won't make me happy, but then there is consequences. So yeah. we should not do that. It's a waste of time. Okay, so go back to that question. Who regulates the... So, so for example, when we leave this body, there is a god known as Yamaraj. He is the demigod of death. And Yamaraj has messengers. And so what happens at the time of death is that the messengers of the god of death come, take the soul, and accompany the soul on its destination to the next, uh, on its journey to the next destination. And so 
Like this, there is a God in charge of death. There is a God in charge of the heavens. There's a God in charge of creation. There's a God in charge of uh, the wind. Everything is regulated by the gods. But if one's wise, then one will develop love for the one ultimate God. Because when you develop love for the one ultimate God, everyone else is included within that. Within that. Is there any regulations for a soul on this um, um, planet or this plane? Is there any regulations? Is there anything that help one to remember his or her purpose here? Is there any God that is also responsible? Are there any regulations that if you don't have a master, that those energies will prick you or uh, give you a sign or help you to know your purpose on earth? Is there any regulations like that? When God creates this material world for us to ultimately realize we're meant to be in the spiritual world, then God also provides knowledge. You said this platform is about knowledge. You said knowledge is power. So the Bible, the Quran, the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita, these are all books of knowledge coming from God. And when one learns the knowledge in these books, then one can awaken their higher consciousness. So firstly, there are divine books. But in order to understand the divine books, you need divine teachers. And therefore the Quran is learned from an Imam, or the Bible is learned from a pastor, or the Bhagavad Gita is learned from a guru. Uh, like that, we have teachers. Because if we want to learn anything in life, you need to learn from someone who's understood that knowledge, but who's also living that knowledge. Okay, but so what happens to um, those? You see the Bible, let me use my, this my place. I know you will know a place in your area. There are places where you go. They don't actually know anything yes. about any of these books. What happened to those souls? It's not their fault that this knowledge has not read them. What happened to those souls? That is one. And two, uh, what about those who would not have the privilege, excuse me for some uh, maybe dis disabled people, he is maybe mm. blind or deaf and dumb. He cannot listen or he cannot um, go through to any master to help or what? What happened to those souls? Wow, very good questions. In your first question, what happens to those who don't get access to the knowledge? They live in some remote place, there's no church, no temple. What happens to them? The first thing is that well, practically the way the world is now, knowledge can go to all places. If you think even this is your social media platform, it reaches all places. So what God does is when a soul has a desire, then God will always make some arrangement for that knowledge to be delivered to that soul. And probably there are many souls out there who are receiving this knowledge and this connection through your social media platform, that's an arrangement of God. So the first thing is that God will always make an arrangement for all individuals to have some exposure to spiritual knowledge that will spark their journey back to the spirit world. That's great. Okay, so let me ask this too, so we continue to why we suffer. All souls come from God. Is that correct? Yes. All souls. All souls. Okay, so how come some people are born with deformity? Does God create deformity? Does he have some deformity or defamation souls he disperses to people here? Yes. We have to understand first that this life is one chapter of a longer story. We've lived lives before, we live this life and we'll continue to live after. 
what you're seeing is one chapter of someone's life. If you go into a movie halfway through and someone's being beaten up, it's very hard for you just from that one scene to understand what were the events leading to this. And it's very hard for you from that one scene to understand where is this going after. So life is complex. Why people are placed in suffering conditions, we don't know the specifics. And neither it is for us to judge them. But what we can say is that everything that happens, happens for a reason. And therefore, even in the struggles, the difficulties, the painful situations, the obstacles that people have to face in their life, there is some spiritual benefit that they will get from that which will help them on their onward journey. What we tell people is that not everything in life that happens is good, but something good can come from everything that happens in life. And therefore, even in the difficult situations, for example, a disability or deformity, we have to understand that the soul is undergoing some evolution in that life, which will help the soul on its journey to free itself from that suffering. So what, what's possible? What, what kind of revolution will be going through someone who is born, excuse my language, autistics, someone who is gone and eating from trash, what kind of evolution will possibly go in through that person's soul? He, did, he was born uh, blind, he was born uh, autistic, he cannot talk, he cannot grow well, he can't even walk, he was born with it. So let's talk about people who were born with this serious uh, uh, um, de deformation or what do we call disabilities. Yes. What, what, what kind of revolu evolution do you think these people will be going through? You were born with this autistics. You are 20 years. You come back. You can't do anything on your own. You, a soul that came from God is here with, with autistics. He can't walk. He can't cook. Like he can't actually participate in anything we do here. A soul that came from God. What kind of evolution will be going through such a soul? What did he do? Mm. Well, there's one big learning that would come from that. That this world is a place of suffering. That in this world, this body can never allow me to fulfill my deepest desires. The soul that goes through such suffering can develop a very uh, vivid awareness that I need to get out of this situation. And therefore, it's not for us to judge why would someone be put in such a situation. We are not God. We can't answer that question. But what we can say is that the acute suffering of that situation will leave a very, very deep impression on the consciousness of that soul that will help them in future lives to actually be released. Most people in this world don't understand or doesn't register to them that this place is a full place full of suffering. Most people see the shining sun, the nice gardens, they achieve money, they go on holidays, they think this world is a happy place. They have money, they have beauty, they may have fame, influence, power. And we may look at them thinking they have a happy life. But actually their happiness is transitory. It doesn't mean anything because it ultimately won't satisfy their soul and it ultimately imprisons them in their own illusion. Whereas sometimes someone who goes through suffering, through difficulty, through pain, they get this deep realization that this world is not my true home. This body is not where I'm meant to reside. 
look at this body, I can't do anything with it. And so we tend to judge, saying these people have a very nice life, these people have a very, very difficult life, but basically everyone has a difficult life because none of us are meant to be here. But sometimes those people who have difficult lives, they develop a deeper awareness and consciousness of what may lie beyond this world. And we may think they're unfortunate, but actually they can develop a great fortune of spiritual realization through their struggle. Is God a loving God? Of course. Does He love us? He loves us. So does He see pain? Of course He sees what pain. What has God, to, God got to do with pain? How does He feel when one is going through pain? Does He have feelings in the first place? God is full of feelings, full of love, full of relationship. God wants us to be with Him in the spiritual world where there's no anxiety, where there's no obstacle. However, He can't force us to be there. That has to be our own uh, volition and desire to be there. So what God may do in this world is through different situations send painful experiences. That's not because God wants to put us into pain, mm -hmm. but because He wants to get us out of the greatest pain. I'll give you an example. Here in Africa, you have fans on the ceiling. And you know children, what they sometimes want to do is touch moving things. But the mother, she knows if the child touches the fan, it will break its hand. Mm -hmm. So you know what the mother does? Mm -hmm. You protect the child from touching it. But she may also do something else. She turns the fan switch off. Then the fan slows down. When the fan is fast enough to give the, pain, give the child some pain, but the fan has slowed down enough so that it doesn't give any permanent damage, then the mother may say, touch it. And the child feels that pain. And you won't try to touch it again. And you won't try to touch it that again. That is what God, what, what God does. Exactly. He gives us some pain in this world, which to us seems very, very great, like the child touching the fan. But just like the mother is doing that purposely to save us from a gator pain, in the same way, God is ultimately releasing us from a greater pain. Okay, so we hear this every day that there are demons, there are uh, uh, wicked, there is, there is Satan, there is this, that is actually troubling mankind or divinity to get through to divine or to get through to eternity. Yeah. How true is this and who created them? Yes. In the Eastern conception of spirituality, there's no Satan. There's no ultimate devil or ultimate power which is against us. But there may be influences, there's energies, there's what we call Maya, which is Sanskrit word meaning illusion. So there's a certain illusory energy which is covering us, keeping us in ignorance. Uh, that Even that comes from God. So you may say, why does God put an energy of illusion in this world if He wants us to come back to Him? Mm -hmm. But God can't force us. And so if we want to experience what life would be like separate from the spiritual world, then God creates an illusory energy by which we forget the spiritual world. And then we can pretend to try and be happy here. But the moment we turn to God, that illusory energy is lifted. The moment we turn to God, all of the negative demonic influences which cover our real knowledge, they don't stand a chance of remaining. And therefore, yes, there is illusion, there is negative energy, there are demoniac influences in this world which block our journey to the spiritual realm. But God and His power is much greater and therefore if you connect with God then none of those things have an opportunity to remain. Hmm. 
You are watching the biggest and the largest and we are discussing what is the origin of the soul and why is there so much suffering in this world? I think we've gotten enough about the souls. So why is there so much suffering in the world? See, it's like this. The first class person learns by hearing. The second class person learns by seeing. But the third class person has to learn by experiencing. And therefore, although all of the knowledge is given in the books, most people don't hear that knowledge and understand it deeply just by reading. And therefore, what God does is He arranges a world in which many, many experiences are given to us as a way of teaching us what He's already told us in the books. And therefore, this world is full of so many difficult situations to remind us of the higher knowledge that God has given us. Okay. So if that is so, the suffering, where is it coming from? We, we, are the, we are the architects of our own suffering because we made the decision to be separate from God. A soul that is coming from God, how does that soul create suffering? How did we know suffering for us to create it? We are coming from God as souls. I don't think we know anything. So who introduced all those things to us? Who? Well, our first mistake was that we desired to be separate from God. When we desired to be separate from God, then God had to facilitate our decision because man proposes. God disposes. God disposes. So God had to create a world. God didn't want to create this world, but we wanted it. And therefore we came to this world. Now in order for us to live in this world, we have to be put into some kind of ignorance. When you go into a cinema, before the movie can start, what's the first thing that happens? You have to turn all the lights off. So this world is like a cinema in which we're trying to experience something. So the first thing is we have to be put into illusion. And when we're put in that illusion, then we suffer. Because suffering means you don't know who you are. You don't know what will make you happy. And so as soon as you're disconnected from your identity, necessarily you will suffer. Hmm. My last question before we come, we come to the end of the show is this. So is heaven a reward? Is heaven a reward for mankind? If yes, how? Earlier in this podcast, I mentioned to you there is the material world and then there's the spiritual world. What the Eastern books of wisdom like Bhagavad Gita explains is that in this material world, there are lower planets, middle planets and higher planets. The higher planets are heavenly planets and they're places that you can go to for material reward. But even if you go to the heavens, that's still within the material world. And so you can go to the heavens and you can experience great happiness in the heavens. You can enjoy thousands of years in great uh, material uh, pleasures. But ultimately it's still what makes you happy because you are a spiritual being. And therefore, in many religions, what is talked about is going to the heavens. But actually in the most evolved religions, they tell us not just to go to the material heavens, but to ultimately go to the spiritual world. So it means it's, it's about yourself and where you want to go, but it's not a reward for your doings. Is it, is it a reward for your deeds, like maybe um, um, sowing seeds, Paying tithes. If you did some charity. Yeah, or, is that what will reward you heaven? Your next destination is determined by two things. Your works and your desire. So if you have the desire to enjoy in the heavens, 
and you've done good works in your life, then you'll go to the heavens. But if you've done good works, in, if you've got the desire to go to the heavens, but you haven't done the good works, you can't go to heaven. You can't go to heaven. So where would, would these souls go? God will watch a soul he has created. God will give the soul a suitable situation on this realm. So it comes back again. Comes back so if a soul decides to come back 10,000 times and refuse to repent, what happened to that soul? The soul gets another chance, keeps coming. Because <laughs> God, He never eternally damns you. He's always watching you to revolve, to come back. Just home. like if someone is sentenced in a prison, they've got 20 years in jail. But then what they do is they interview the person after 10 years and they see if this person has changed, then they release them. Because God doesn't want to subject us to suffering, God wants us to experience bliss. But sometimes the suffering He gives is meant to awaken us to experience that bliss. But that suffering is never eternal. So 10,000, what to say 10,000? 10 million, we 10 billion, we can run back here life after life. God will keep giving us another the chance. The opportunities exactly. to make it right. Right. 